We're living in weird times right now. We've just like, I feel like hit the cusp of what we're gonna experience in our lifetime. Donald Trump must pay $83.3 million for defaming E. Jean Curl. and welcome back to Mixed Realities TV. I'm excited because it's been a while since we sat down and talked on the talk podcast. Um, we hit a milestone the other day. We got our first Etsy sale. First sale. Shout out to Karen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, she bought one of our SD card holders, one of the ones Weston's holding right now, which yeah. is so cool because we haven't like kept up with 3D printing um, over the last weeks or like months it's yeah been months or like marketed for our Etsy shop and she just stumbled upon it and found it and bought it so that's very cool yeah we do have pop-ups I realized that pop up within the episode but I'm pretty sure she came from just scrolling on Etsy yeah and um yeah I think we looked her up but I think she's like a we couldn't find we couldn't find her exact thing but she's she she's a be. photographer you're filmmaker so thank you for supporting us sorry for missing the notification of the order we had two <laughs> orders actually one that we had a refund because they accidentally ordered they didn't mean to but the other one karen she uh actually ordered and she got her product um two days uh, or, yeah two days ago yeah. and since we missed her order by six days we gave her a free one we gave her two of them two and then one of the small ones so and she's also our first customer, so we had to hook her up a lot. So He did not mean to just flick you off. What? You just flicked him off when you held mm -hmm. it. <laughs> All right, but... Uh, anyway, well, it's been a while. We February is like the beginning of our year, if you would say. <laughs> so it's what? It's January 31st today. February starts tomorrow. Um, well, January... Is January is a weird month for us. We traveled for the first time in a while, visited my family, mm -hmm. um, and then we kind of broke our, our our challenge because we were visiting our families. And we, so, we said January was going to be kind of a first since it's first time traveling in a while, a relaxed month to ease into it. We started our challenge, but not like completely. This is really the first week. Of us kind of really going yeah January hard it's been it. very cold in January but you know it's great because usually the beginning of the year brings like anxiety around doing things and getting things perfect and working really hard at the beginning of the year going to the gym every single day putting all these expectations on yourself so it was kind of nice to sit with the flow and let everything in life flow and kind of not be so hard on ourselves. Um, I feel like we've been sitting in our time a lot better, taking it day by day. So if you started this year slow like us, shout out to you. Unknown caller. That oh. was my phone. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Just turn the silent on. Shout out to you. But um, yeah, we've been having, you know, the slow living. We've been very, very incorporating that into our lives and being grateful every single day spending time with ourselves every single day. So it's been great. Um, I'm excited, though, for February and being consistent with the pod um, and our challenge, because I love challenges. Show. We love show, challenges. Show, not pod. Show. Sorry, guys. <laughs> but we love challenges, so I'm very excited. But what, what uh, did you uh, change in this part of the challenge when it comes to, like, you know, meditation-wise or anything along those lines? Did you change anything along those? Like, um, or well, even... I the one goal, really, I have, personal goal for myself this year, is to do breathwork meditation consistently almost every single day. And I have been, and it's really great, because I feel like it's... Well, first of all, I've been using the Open app recently, and it's like a meditation. No free shout outs. We're not sponsored by them. We're not. Okay. <laughs> but it's a great app because usually when you do breath work or meditation or a 10 minute yoga place, you really go to just like YouTube or Apple, I guess, or Spotify. But 
this just app of just stocked breath work and meditation is pretty cool because you can just go to your app every morning and take it day by day. There's one different one for every single day, which I feel like it's good because when I go on YouTube to watch meditation or something, I end up watching the same one over and over. So the app's really cool, but I basically just want to be consistent with that because um, nothing has changed me like breath work meditation has changed me. Like exercising, sitting down to just do like regular meditation. For me, that's like sitting in <coughs> silence for 10 minutes, but nothing's changed me like breath work meditation. It's a direct line to your nervous system. And by waking up and choosing to connect with your breath and your sense of self every single day, it's kind of life-changing. I It's very healing. I would say um, I've been seeing it a lot more pop up on like social media and stuff, which is just really good, good because yeah. people are just coming. I feel like starting to realize the importance of mental mental health because there's oh yeah like f physical health. I feel like mental health should honestly be kind of put into the men like the mental health category as well because yeah. it all is connected. And I feel like you know if you kind of focus on your mental health then you'll make you want to folk, you know, do better with your physical health. It'll make you want to do better with other yeah. aspects of your life as well. So, But it's the same like when you work out, you are <clears throat> like ac pushing yourself, accomplishing a certain goal. When you do breath work, you're kind of just putting yourself in a state. Sail. Your sail. <laughs> in a different state and like kind of get into that panic state for some of them. Um, so I feel like it's really just... What's the word? It's kind of like an activity. It's like a relief, uh, a, a, relief, a workout with yourself, with mm -hmm. your breath. So it's really cool. I would encourage people to try it. It relieves a lot of stress, just like working out does. Um, I feel like it makes me very centered. It brings me back to myself. And it releases a lot of just like anger, anxiety that's built up because you're literally breathing it out of you. So I really like it because of those reasons. So try it out. Okay. It's good. And what's, what's you know, connected to your mental health is, you know, it comes down to your brain. Your and brain. your brain controls your mental thoughts and everything that goes on in your body. And one thing crazy has happened recently since we just had our last podcast. Elon Musk... Neuralink company has implanted its first chip in a human brain. What's next? <laughs> so Elon Musk announced last week that Neuralink has implanted um, the chip in the brain mm. and the person's recovering fine and it's measuring their brain activity. In the beginning, this is going to be for people like Stephen Hawking who are tied to a chair, people with ALS that can't you know, communicate normally. And so... It's tits, tits, this technology has kind of been around for a while, um, but we just recently found their YouTube channel and it kind of goes over the exact um, things that the chip does and we'll yeah. play that for you while we're watching it here now. Hello. We're thrilled to introduce Neuralink's Prime study, the first clinical trial of a groundbreaking experimental device that could help transform the lives of people with paralysis. Imagine the joy of connecting with your loved ones, browsing the web, or even playing games using only your thoughts. This is made possible by placing a small, cosmetically invisible implant in a part of your brain that plans movements. The device is designed to interpret your neural activity so you can operate a computer or a smartphone by simply thinking about moving. No wires or physical movement are required. By participating in the PRIME study, you'd be helping to redefine the boundaries of human capability. If you've been living with quadriplegia from a spinal cord injury or with ALS, you may qualify for the PRIME study. We'd love to share more with you and get you on board. Visit our website today to learn more and to submit your application. We'll be supporting you with a dedicated team at every step on this revolutionary journey. Your courage and contribution could significantly shape the future of interaction and independence, not just for you, but for countless others. Why did 
they decide to go with it literally sounds like something from a creepy sci-fi film i mean like holy crap <laughs> i admire him so much for being insane because he's freaking insane but like we're living in weird times right now that like we've just like i feel like hit the cusp of what we're gonna experience in our lifetime and to yeah. see this and this happening and is bizarre and i'm kind of speechless from that but yeah that video is kind of creepy i'm not gonna lie <laughs> yeah have you seen the movie ex ex machima like it kind of follows that like that slow that, you know just kind of weird eerie like this is the future type of vibe you always have to have a british because it is the, yeah but you always need to have someone with a british accent when you're doing sci-fi stuff it makes it sound so much more futuristic and it is we are living in the future it's yeah. insane. That's insane. I'm excited. Yeah. And, you know, for people who have those type of disabilities, like, you know, Stephen Hawking and mm -hmm. people with ALS, like this is would be a breakthrough for them. And I can only imagine what it's going to be like in 10, 15, 20 years. Yeah. Um, if you have been other, uh, other interviews with Elon Musk, he has brought up, you know, that he wants to figure out ways to conserve life and because there's a lot of brilliant people that you know you know everyone dies someday but sometimes the most brilliant people who are helping humanity become better um should live longer maybe like you know if a gandhi or something like that yeah. if they could have lived longer they maybe the world would be a better place but moving on kind of on the opposite side of making the world a better place Donald Trump must pay $83.3 million for defaming E. Jean Curl, jury says. A ex president in a defamation trial, losing it and then having to pay that money <laughs> is crazy. But Trump's team, before all these things have gone down, said they have a stockpile of roughly $450 million in cash. Bloomberg has that at uh, roughly six hundred million dollars in cash. That's l of liquid assets. So, eighty-three million dollars is not that big a deal. But he has those other fraud trials that are going to probably have big payouts as well. So, besides that, weird times. Weird times. But <laughs> the question is, will d does this affect the primary or not the primaries, the presidential, you know, vote? Yeah. I honestly do not. Think this will these tr these ones do because what he what people the really you know the the diehard you know left the Democrats what they have against them is to, uh, he tried to overthrow the government he tried to incite ins insurrections those are the big ones and those trials haven't really moved as uh, as quickly forward as these other fraud and civil trials. And if they don't get moved forward in time, they will probably get barred until he becomes president or after election. And then if they fizzle out and nothing comes through with those, then I can just see this being another um, Russian collusion type of trial where it's just going to be his base that uses it saying, hey, guys, you guys said these things about him. He, you said he would try to you know, overthrow the government, but he was never com uh, convicted of them. So then it's just going to honestly be fuel to the fire and help him when if th nothing happens. So I don't know. I feel like they're playing with fire when they're when you go up against Trump in a court because You're if you lose playing with fire yeah if, if, if you lose it's going to backfire if you win then yeah it's going to bring him down but then it's does it bring him down enough that his base won't vote for him probably not so um <laughs> yeah it, it, we live in a very interesting time because you have so this stuff happening to Trump on. and then you have the stuff that's happening to Biden's son and then you have yeah. the and it's just like why do Americans why do we settle <laughs> For these type of things, when we do have better alternatives, but it's just the parties suppress them with you know RFK and then you know just anyone that goes up against Trump, he didn't even debate people either. So it's like you can't really hold. So yeah, we live in a weird time. But <laughs> on the next subject, oh, wait, wait, wait. this is a weird times podcast, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the next subject Uno is mas. yeah the, is the Vix, Vix McMahon. I don't know too much about this. You sent this to me, um, so let me pull up the article that you sent to me. Well, an article that I picked up. Vince McMahon, WWW, uh, WWW, WWW, WWW. <laughs> Vince McMahon, WWE founder, resigns amid sex trafficking allegations. These allegations are weird because. 
when you're dealing with power and money like this, you why are they coming out so far? And this kind of goes back to the Trump like, thing. Like, gosh, he's... This, why are they coming out 10 years afterward? Are they... Is it because, you know, these people see these, you know, the, these individuals gain so much money and wealth that they're like, oh, I need a piece of that now because, you, you know, trying to act, you know, yeah, act I mean, some kind of revenge? Yeah. Or are they f- completely fake? I don't know. Well, I mean, he's 78 years old. Yeah. Has two kids. I'm sorry for his kids because the allegations are, you know, disturbing. Uh, they suck. Um, uh, I wonder how his ex-wife is doing. Isn't she, like, political? I'm pretty I, sure I she's know. political. She's They're divorced. I've never I'm been a big sure, fan of WWE. I was yeah, I'm UFC pretty sure she was, she's political if you look her up. But just sorry to his family because those allegations suck, you know. But I don't know how true they are. But the text messages that came out are pretty vile. And it's bizarre that they... He was talking to people like this, but the girl is responding. Yeah, and to his favor, so they're keen. They're in this keen relationship. So I don't know, but we'll see. I don't. I'm, I might keep up with this one because this it's intriguing. Because I used to love WWE before I found out it was semi fake, but <laughs> it's all fake. But um, <laughs> we actually have some of the text message leaked text messages that were filed in the court. Here is we won't go, go through all of them. But just to so you understand what these things say, this is him sending it to this lady. I love it. That's you, Janelle. You just can't get enough, can you? <laughs> In the future, it's going to be so bad that you were that you'll demand to be f- twice a day and not with blank in three way. That, I said blank because that one word is redacted for some reason. <laughs> um, Probably a name. <laughs> yeah. Why not let others see the beautiful voluptuous body or voluptuous body and watch you shake uncomfortably when you come? They'll go th- out there and they'll go out of their minds. I don't, know, I don't know what that means. Then they'll find more friends and will tie you up and you're so helpless. I'll direct them to have their way with you. Who can make you scream the loudest? Maybe I'll just line them up and then. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. That's good. That's enough. You need your panties ripped off and three big black all in your holes. Okay. <laughs> can you put like a warning sign on this? I'll, one? I'll, I'll, I'll blur, a beep out all those bad words for you guys so the kids at home don't know. But I'll also have, they'll be playing while these. Um, so yeah, the, the crazy times, crazy times. It seems like we, okay, so we live in a weird time because think about these 80 year olds that are 80 now. When they were 20, 60s, women had hardly any rights. <laughs> and, and, yeah, geez. And, uh, they might have had the same rights they had today, but they were definitely looked down upon compared to today's society. Women had a lot of things um, in their way to be have actual careers. Um, and so maybe these older guys aren't the best to kind of, um, look back on when it comes to, I mean, but everything's bizarre because you have like, you know, OnlyFans, subscriptions, all that good stuff. And it's crazy because I feel like back in the day, I could be wrong, but I feel like back in the day it was just porn and it was, that was the thing. It was porn. It was Playboy. It was, well, that, yeah, that was it. it. But like OnlyFans, you need to go to the they, store. It wasn't as convenient to get. Yeah, and but like OnlyFans, they act like it's a. Well, it is a job, and they make a lot of money, and I'm not, you know, demanding whatever. But like, they act like it's different from being a porn star, or different from being, you know, I don't know. It's weird. The dynamics weird nowadays because people are gonna grow up and they're gonna be like, yeah, I'm just an OnlyFans model, and that's their career. They made a make a good living off of that career. But back in the day, it was like we were a porn star. What the hell is an OnlyFans model? Yeah. It's, I don't know okay, what's going so on. Okay, so if you're an OnlyFans model, model that shows new stuff, you're I consider you as a porn porn star. Okay. But if you're just an OnlyFans person that does like bikini photos and feet stuff, you're not a porn star. Like, okay. Or porn, whatever. A porn, whatever the other. I don't think. I think porn star is too strong of a word. Okay, so <laughs> if I if I was if I did OnlyFans, sex workers. Would you let me do OnlyFans? 
Uh, if I just no. did underwear, no nudity? No. Okay. Not right now, where we are. <laughs> so in a few years, you ever think about it? Yeah, maybe, maybe, oh. maybe. Okay. Yeah, may, maybe, but uh, you don't need to do those type of things. <laughs> uh, maybe in a few years. You're very open to everything. I love you, man. That's, yeah, that's I great. mean, if the money's right, but I feel like right now, I mean, what's worse than being an OnlyFans star, the, posting those things to get no money? <laughs> I would be so sad if I failed. If I was like people, if nobody paid to look at me, I'd be like, what the, what yeah, the fuck? I think that's part of the addiction. Like, you're like, they start off doing those bikini things and they're mm -hmm. not making any money, so then they start doing they're like, the damn, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about panties off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I think, um, yeah, I, that's why I said not right now. Definitely, no, no, no way. I don't think I would want to. Yeah, but so like, I'm glad it's I would open. say it's you gross. wouldn't start right now. I wouldn't be opposed to you doing non nudity stuff later on when you have the following. Okay. Because the non nudity stuff is not the problem. The problem is these girls who are eighteen, or you go and like you like buy their membership or something like that, yeah. and then they're like literally just full on porn stars on their OnlyFans at like eighteen years old, and you're like, what the? Heck? Like, Love they're you making though. they're making tons of money. Pop but, shit. You know, but. Uh, one thing that we kind of forgot to mention in the beginning of this is that I do have a segment this week. Oh, yeah. Don't um, so I guess we could play that for you now. It's a con it's a segment on content creation. It's also going to be our first kind of segment that's mixed between our business, the Thorough Labs, and Mixed Realities. So we'll have more content that's presented by Mixed Thorough Labs, but posted on this page. So we'll link Thorough Labs, the website below, so you can go check it out. Because I'm trying to it. figure out ways to knock out content for both at the same time, because you only have so much time in the day. So this content will make for not only Thorough Labs, but mixed reality. So without further ado, let's watch it. Let's watch it. Welcome to the Content Zone on Mixed Realities TV, presented by Thorough Labs. <sighs> I know, that was a mouthful. In this video, we'll be covering content marketing strategies and advice that we see work for our clients, along with just other content creators in the space. What you're not gonna see in this video is just basic regurgitated advice like add cool hooks or call to actions at the end of your video. So without further ado, let's get into it. Struggling to attract clients and followers with your content? Start by identifying your ideal client and allow their needs and their pain points to guide your content. Trends and strategies can follow, but your ideal client should always lead the way when it comes to getting clients from your content marketing. Marketing strategy. Number two, create content that's uniquely you and allow your brand to shine through. That kind of rhymed. Remember, in the beginning, it's not about likes and views. It's about showcasing your expertise and giving value to your ideal client. This is how you get more than just likes and clicks on your website and actually clients from your content. Number three, don't let AI replace you. AI may be able to give people knowledge, but it can't give people your personality and your years of experience. As I've said previously, it's time to shift your focus from going viral to giving value. Quality will always trump quantity when it comes to creating and crafting content that wins you clients and not just likes. So building off of number three, your story, your experience is what sets you apart. Don't shy away from it. Embrace it. This will allow potential clients to see who you are and to learn from your expertise. They'll give a little peek into the window of what it's like to work with you while other content creators or other companies are just regurgitating pieces of content that's cookie cutter like. Yours will actually shine through and be unique because it's who you are. It's who your brand is. Embrace that brand. Companies like Tesla and Apple do such a great job at this and that's why they have such a loyal following. Build that community by creating authentic content that not only speaks to you, but speaks to your clients and at least makes you happy and at the end of the day will make your ideal client happy and want to work with you. Number five. What does Mr. Beast and Steven Spielberg have in common? The skill of storytelling. Storytelling is the heart of great content. Whether you're creating a webinar or a TikTok video, this is what keeps the audience's attention. Mastering this skill will allow you to connect with your audience on a deeper level and leave a lasting impression. For example, following the three act structure. Act one is setting the tone and building curiosity. Act two is presenting the information and raising the stakes. And finally, act three with having the climax and showcasing the full value of the video followed by the resolution or in marketing we like to call the call to action. So like and subscribe. And for number six or seven or eight, I've lost track 
on what uh, number we're on. So we're going to have to just say random numbers moving forward. But for the next one, showcase your work with other clients or on other projects on the form of behind the scenes, reviews, case studies, or things along those lines. So this type of content can come off as salesy unless if you come up with a cool and unique and entertaining way to present it. For example, a very cool before and after reveal or a very, very inspiring success story that one of your clients had. These type of content can make people connect and put them in the shoes of your client and want to get those results that your client's seen. So try to not do it too often unless if you have a really entertaining way to do so. And if you don't do it too often, try to make it very, very at the top of your profile. That way your clients can see it right when they go onto your profile. And lastly, so in the beginning of this video, we said it's not about the views and likes in the beginning, which is true. But once you have enough data to see what type of content your ideal client is engaging with and convincing them to book appointments with you, then what you want to consider is investing in targeted ad campaigns that boost your visibility and attract potential clients. High quality content mixed with smart ad spending can literally be the fuel to the fire of your business and get you clients that you wouldn't have done organically. But first you have to go through the trials and errors of figuring out what messaging, what content resonates with your ideal clients organically. That way when you do run these ad campaigns, you can go into them knowing that this type of content from your experience works and at least speaks to your ideal clients. And then of course there'll be A-B testing once you start running the ads, but there'll be less of it because you're coming to the ad campaign with pre-made content that you know already gains views and likes. And that way you can at least save, get a better ROI from your ad campaign. And that's it. I hope you guys learned something from the video. Like and subscribe. And if it really comes down to just being unique to yourself and creating content that speaks to your ideal client. Back to you, Weston Lexi. Wait, I am Weston. Back to you, future self. <laughs> Thank you, good looking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that guy was <gasps> handsome. I don't know, man. That his eyes are so dreamy. Oh, shut man. up, man. That that was seduced me. <laughs> I'm not. I mean, I don't want. I'm not gonna say anything. You already have it in your head. It's great. Uh, but uh, first of all, I love storytelling that Weston does. <laughs> that wasn't um, really too much, but for that, for a video like that, that's and his tone, you know. Um, a lot of great things said there, but if you haven't seen Weston's other storytelling, actual storytelling, go to the page and check it out because it's pretty freaking good. I really like that video. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so the whole point of that video is just to get, give you guys information about stuff. And like I said, be content for both this page and Thorough Labs and to give an insight of kind of like what we do for our, our clients. Like a big thing about... Content nowadays is grabbing people's attention. Everyone's fighting for people's attention. And I think see what's moving forward in 2024. TikTok's released, um, you know, the feature of doing over longer a minute, vi longer form videos. So kind of videos that slow things down that are very informative but are longer, I feel like are going to be more of a thing in 2024 and beyond because, you know, after a while, people just get burned out. You get burned out of everything. You just get consumed so much. I mean, yeah, um, your brain's really not supposed to take that TikTok vibe in all the time, 24-7. Yeah, and then we're seeing th people, you know, you know, things slow down. And so what we, in our, what we've seen with our clients over the past years, our clients who sit down and do long-form videos that then we chop up into minute clips and then 30-second um, to a minute clips and then post them on other, all, all on their, all, on all their platforms. Mm -hmm. Um we see them have high success. And so um, that's kind of an example of also what we could do for our clients and what we do for our clients already. So <clears throat> I think, boom, boom. yeah. Can't um, wait to share more with you guys. It's been good. It's been great. Yeah, and uh, like I said, our Etsy store is up. We only have two products on that page. We'll be posting more. Maybe we'll do a post every week that just is – dedicated to, our, to the products on our pages. We only have two products, so we'll make that maybe part of the like our posting schedule. But we working. are, we do plan on printing more soon because it's freaking fun and we can't wait to share that as well. Yeah, it's just a mix of finding the right product and then, you know, editing it so it has our logo and finding, because I'm not a master 3D ed designer, so. Um, I have to find pre-made stuff or have people make some of these stuff for me because I don't know how to do it. So. Anyway, love you. Bye. Peace.